Welcome back YouTube. I'm Adam Johnson and this is the NFA Review Channel. Today we have the much anticipated CGS Group Kraken 9. Guys, if you've been following me for any length of time on Facebook or Instagram, you have known about the suppressor for probably about two years. Rewind a little bit, about two years ago, Josh with CGS Group came by. Uh, we filmed the CGS Group Hydra, their 22 can, and he had the prototype version of this with him. And I teased it on Facebook and you guys loved it. Sorry it took so long to get to this point, but uh, red tape is red tape. We're finally here. You guys get to see what it looks like on the inside, how it works, and more importantly, how it sounds. Some of you already know how it sounds, about 3,000 of you, if you came out to my December event 2017 and my uh, more recently uh, third annual NFA review shoot in April of 2018. CGS Group was at both events letting you guys live fire demo this puppy, and wow, a lot of people were impressed. So let's go ahead open this thing up, see what it looks like, see how to take it down, what it's made from, and then hit that range and see just how she performs. First things first, when you uh, get the suppressor from your dealer, you'll notice it comes in a nice little hard hard top uh, waterproof case here and it has an o-ring around it um, i'm not going to really use this to store the suppressor but you know what this would be good for cigars so that's pretty neat i can finally use a suppressor box for something other than storing it in one of my closets in my house uh, something else will come with is the takedown tool this is the same takedown tool that their hydra uh, ships with so if you already have that now you have continuity across the line for your takedown tools so good on them for that one and of course a manual as far as the specifications go, it comes in in an overall length of 7.7 .7 inches, a diameter of 1.37 inches, and a weight of 9.9 .9 ounces. More on that in just a second. Construction. You have a 17.4 heat treated and nitride coated piston. The rear cap here is 7075 T6 aluminum. Moving through the suppressor, you have the booster assembly itself, a 17.4 heat treated stainless with a black nitride on it. And then the blast baffle itself is also 17.4 heat treated with a nitride coating on it. Moving forward, the remaining baffles are 70.75 T6 aluminum with a type 3 hard coat anodizing. And then you have your tube, which is 60.61 T6 aluminum with a nice uh, anodizing as well. And the front cap, I believe, is 6061 uh, aluminum with the anodizing. So basically what you have here is a can with the proper materials where you need them. Uh, it would be overkill to have, you know, 7075, you know, front cap or tube or stainless or something like that. And what they did here is proper weight distribution. So you have all your weight towards a muzzle end of the firearm. So that's why a lot of people at the shoot I mentioned at the start of the video uh, post demo, they mentioned how lightweight it felt on the gun. Well, 9.9 .9 ounces isn't exactly super lightweight, okay? It's not 22 can light, but it felt, you know, weightless. And the reasoning is you have the 17.4 housing, piston, and blast baffle all towards the rear of the can. So when you put it on your host gun, you're not going to have that weight way out here magnifying the effect of, you know, weight hanging off the end of your gun. So. Kudos to CGS Group for that one. Uh, I can attest it feels great in the hand when you're shooting. All right, let's move on to takedown. Field stripping and maintenance of the suppressor is super simple. The little front uh, spikes on the takedown tool will interlock with the holes in the front cap. Loosen it, set that aside. And when you're reassembling, just don't go crazy on the torque. There's no need to. Once the front cap's off, you can turn the suppressor tube over. And then they should just fall right out in line. We got all of them, but the blast baffle. That one normally sticks in there, I've noticed here on this particular one. To get that out, just go ahead and remove the rear cap, which you need to do anyway to kind of clean the inside of the housing of carbon fouling, stuff like that. So that's where you're gonna have the majority of the buildup here is in your blast chamber. You have the rear cap here before we get to the blast baffle. You have the rear cap, which has an O-ring engagement, okay, so you don't get, you know, gas blowing back into your face. The spring and the piston. 
And then the blast baffle is stuck in here. Sometimes I just use a cleaning rod and just give it some love here. And there it goes. It was just stuck. This is a brand new can. I haven't shot it yet. I have a shooting example. A shooting example can in the safe still. But I wanted this nice and clean for you guys for the video. That's probably why that's one stuck in there. It just hasn't been used. So then you have the tube. So as far as cleaning, uh, the tube, just, you know, use a, spray some oil in there. You know, you can use like one of those shotgun mops in here to get all the crap off the walls. You're not going to have much because this is a encapsulated baffle system. This is the same Orion baffle used in the Hydra that I mentioned earlier. It's a little tweaked in some areas and it's obviously larger. And they, uh, they got a lot of performance out of this can with only seven baffles, if you ask me. A lot of performance. So your blast baffle is going to look different than all the other ones, so you're definitely not going to be able to get that confused when you reassemble. The remaining six Orion baffles are all identical, so it doesn't matter what order you put them in. So you have the blast baffle, which is 17-4 stainless. You can clean that along with the piston, the spring, and yeah, that's about it. These three pieces you can put in a ultrasonic cleaner if you wanted to, but it it's probably going to wear down that beautiful nitride coating, so I would just clean it by hand, guys, old-fashioned mode. And the remaining baffles, hit it with some uh, solvent, hit it with a wire brush, knock off all the big pieces. Again, you don't need to make it super clean. Go ahead and give you a close-up here of all six baffles so you guys can kind of see how they're designed. It's really neat. When they're encapsulated, you can, you can see how the bullet goes in here and the gas gets trapped behind the projectile as it makes its way through the suppressor. And really neat design here. While it's being encapsulated, you don't have any gas leakage. Um, you have a nice little lip here. There's no leakage sticking to the outside walls, but there's also a lot of volume uh, for what's going on here. So uh, kudos to Josh on designing that one. So basically just, just hand clean the entire can doesn't have to be crazy and uh, you can go ahead and reassemble it. So I usually just wipe it down with some rim oil, some really lightweight oil, assemble the stack. You're going to want to line up the notches here all in the same order so you can repeat your point of impact shift if any. There's my sixth baffle and then the blast baffle goes on top and then you can drop your tube over it. Again those notches like previous suppressors I always like to line up the writing on the two with it. So my point of impact, if any, again, is repeatable. And just go ahead and shimmy that in there a little bit. Come on. One of them got hung up. Oh, there it goes. And once that's in there, you can throw on your front cap and just tighten it down just enough to hold it in place. But let's say you wanted to throw some flare on your suppressor. They just released different colored rear caps and front caps. So you have the tungsten gray and you have, I don't know what they call it, red. So you have anodized red and gray. So you could use, you could throw on a red end cap and a rear cap to match your host gun or the gray or mix and match or vice versa, whatever you want to do. Uh, pretty cool that they have that option. And then uh, all the suppressors ship with a half by 28 piston. Uh, but I think by the time this video airs, they're going to have the 13 by 5 by 1 pistons ready to go. And they already have designed a internal three lug for your three lug applications out there. Pretty much everybody is going to the internal lug. Um, so you don't have any added overall link to the suppressor making it unwieldy. Um, so now that we got the, you know, the specs out of the way and the cleaning, I really want to dive into uh, some other features of this can. Uh, one of which is the alignment of the piston once it's in the booster housing here. When this is reciprocating back and forth and unlocking from the gun with the spring around it, there is always six points of contact. So there's actually 12 points total. So during recoil phase and after the recoil phase, there's always going to be six points of contact with that piston to keep this can aligned to where you want it. There's also an alignment notch in the piston itself so you know exactly where that's clocked each time uh, you clean this. You can repeat it. Again, that's the name of the game here. You want to maintain accuracy post cleaning. For your fixed barrel applications, they have a, a fixed spacer. Now they did something that 
Other companies haven't done yet and I don't know why because it's super simple and when I saw it, I immediately knew why they did it and again, light bulb, why hasn't anybody done this? So their fixed spacer is actually clockable as well, just like the teeth on the piston. So let's say you want to thread this on the, the Ruger PC carbine, the 9mm carbine. Okay, you would need this because you can't put a, a piston with a spring on a fixed barrel. Okay, it's going to jackhammer the can to death. So you would use your uh, fixed spacer here, align it like so, put the rear cap on, yada yada, screw it down, and now you can clock using the writing so you have a reference point, uh, your point of impact shift. Again, if there's any noticeable shift. Uh, so, pretty cool. Now that we have that all the way, let's talk numbers. And I'm not talking price here, I'm talking reduction. Uh, a lot of controversy out with this can. Uh, there was a lot of non-believers out there uh, when this can first came out because, you know, there's a lot of performance coming. It broke some molds, okay? It made some people wary that it's even possible that a 9mm can can get this quiet. This freaking O-ring is tight. Brand new can. So, metered with a uh, B and K 2209 meter set to mil spec standards at the muzzle with Freedom Munitions Hush 165 grain ammo on a Glock 17 metered at 116.1 decibels. One more time, 116.1 decibel average with a Hush 165 grain ammo. Okay, moving on to a different host, Beretta M9 metered at 118.3 decibels with the same Freedom Munitions 165 grain hush. Now that's quite ammo, there's no doubt about it. So they went ahead and tested the Glock 17 again with the really crappy and loud American Eagle 147 grain ammo, which I hate using. And it still averaged 122 dB, so four decibels louder. Guys, you're talking 116 to 122 range here on a nine millimeter pistol. That's crazy quiet. Uh, again, two years ago when I shot the prototype in my backyard, I knew we had something special. Uh, there's a video floating around that went viral not too long ago where I was shooting the Dead Air Mask 22 next to this, the current version in my backyard, and they sounded identical in tone and sound reduction, and it was downright amazing. And I know it didn't translate that well because it was a cell phone video, but I'm telling you, they really broke some barriers here with this can. Uh, so I think that about covers it for the studio, guys. I don't want to dram on too long here. Uh, you guys probably want to hear what this sounds like. So I'm going to grab an assortment of hosts here, and we're going to hit the range. Um, some of you guys may have noticed that I would sometimes Easter egg my... Uh, backdrop here and you kind of know what video is coming next just by seeing what guns are hanging up. Uh, in this case, the next video on my channel after this one will be the CGS group Kraken SK, the shorter version, and this thing is still hearing safe dry on this little Glock 19X. So have to stay tuned for that video. I'm going to be filming it sometime next week and I'll go ahead and get it edited and get out there to you guys. So yeah, let's go ahead, hit that range, and see just how she does.
totally hear the uh, follower and spring in this magazine bouncing around. That's how quiet it is. You guys definitely need more than five rounds of that. Let's do that again. Well, everybody, I'm going to say something that I pretty much never say in any video. 
This is by far the quietest 9mm suppressor I have ever fired. Um, you guys heard it. Uh, we went from the 147 to the 158 to the 165s. Uh, 158 used to be the golden standard as far as you know the best uh, you know factory subsonic ammo you could find. As you probably noticed, it was louder than the 147s and the 165s, which means the hush is probably downloaded a little bit more. Um, but it cycled most of the guns fine. We only had one issue uh, that with the 165s, and that was on the Glock 19X. The recoil springs just too stiff. Uh, that gun was designed for 124 grain NATO, so there's no surprise there. Uh, maybe as I break in the gun, uh, the 165s will run in it. As far as quiet as host today, the Beretta was actually louder than the Glock, and obviously the 9mm STI here, which most of you that have been around long enough know that a 1911 is the quietest host you can get, mainly due to the increased lock time. So by the time the breech opens, most of the gas has already escaped down the suppressor so you don't get any breech pop in your ears. So as far as hosts go, the 9mm 1911 uh, wins. Uh, yeah, the Beretta definitely, definitely surprised me, but you know, when CGS Group was metering it, it did meter higher. So that makes sense that you know, as far as I could tell here, live in person, it was louder. Uh, the Glock 19 actually sounded pretty good, pretty well, well-rounded host there for the price point. Um, you know, I don't know what else to say, guys. We shot it at a uh, profile view, and then I shot it 50 yards away. And then uh, check out this footage. I screwed around a little bit and did a yard pop, unsuppressed and suppressed. 158, unsuppressed baseline, yard pop. Yard pop with the loudest ammo of the day, the 158. And then I screwed around a little bit more uh, towards the end of the day. I was wrapping things up before I moved the camera over here in the shade. Uh, I did something new. I set up the, the camera in my truck bed and I placed myself halfway between the camera, microphone, and the berm. So the, sh so the gunshot was coming from the halfway point, and then the microphone was picking up the impact at the berm. Go ahead and take a listen to that. So a little experimentation today. Uh, if you guys like those two new angles, please let me know in the comments below and I'll try to do my best to add them to future reviews. Uh, filming alone is pretty hard. I had to set those two extra shots on autofocus, which I hate. Uh, as you can tell, one of them didn't focus correctly and I can't adjust the exposure. So if I go walk out 50 f yards into the field and the clouds move and my exposure blows out, there's nothing I can do if I don't have somebody here helping. So. Uh, yeah, if I do those angles in the future, I'm going to have to invite somebody out here to help me film. So, well, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you want to find your own Kraken 9, which I'm sure as hell you do by now, I can't put the link in the description below because that would be against YouTube's Nazi rules. Uh, but you can probably contact CGS Group on their website, just saying. Follow them, call them, email them and uh, they'll let you know where you can pick one up. I know in the Tampa Bay area, uh, Dan Perigine over at Gunshine State Armory, uh, my partner up with him, he has some, and I know Reload over in Tarpon Springs bought some before my shooting event back in uh, December. So as far as Tampa Bay, those are two locations I know you can find these. And if the Kraken wasn't enough, they do have a 45 version coming out, the Nautilus. So that's gonna be out soon. Hopefully it hits the streets before shot. That's what I've been told. So we're only about six months away before it hits dealer shelves, the Nautilus. So be expecting a review on that as well. But the next review on my channel is going to be the Kraken SK, the short version of this. So make sure to click that like and subscribe button so you don't miss it. See you next time. <laughs>